What is going on everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope you lot are doing well and welcome to today's video, which is a match review of the Super Cup. Chelsea versus Liverpool. 1-1, full time, 2-2, extra time. Chelsea lose 4-5 on penalties, but man, one epic game. Before we do get into today's match review, I'd like to request you do subscribe to my YouTube channel and hit the bell notifications icon, because I upload once or twice a day, including the streams. Uh, and also, if you could like this video, that would help me out. Right then, before this game kicked off, Perhaps yesterday, the day before, no one would have given Chelsea a chance against the champions of Europe, Liverpool. Obviously, Jurgen Klopp's project at Liverpool is years into its tenure. He's had huge investments. They're a very, very good team. He's a very good coach. Um, and Chelsea are in the opposite side of the spectrum. Transfer ban, lost their best player, new youngest coach in the Premier League, inexperienced. And the most salient point here probably is how Liverpool came off a really easy game at Anfield against newly promoted team Norwich where they won 4-1. And Chelsea came off a 4-0 drubbing where they had to travel up to Old Trafford in the Midlands. But on top of that, Liverpool had a whole extra two days rest. So all things considered, you can say Liverpool were heavy, heavy favourites. But the game didn't pan out how people thought it would. It was an incredible contest. Lampard rallied the boys, Kante came back in, he switched up the formation a little bit, and it was an explosive game and an explosive performance from Chelsea. Really dominant at times. So, how did Frank Lampard line up as Chelsea? It is interesting, so let's bring up the analysis page. Rather surprisingly, Frank Lampard showed his flexibility yet again and caught everyone out by playing Sarri's 4-3-3 against Liverpool. Uh, and yes, Kante was on the right and Jorginho was at the base of the midfield. So, as you can see next to me, it was how Chelsea lined up in and out of possession. 4-3-3 in possession, 4-5-1 out of possession. Kepper in goal, Emerson left back, Azpilicueta right back. The centre-back partnership at yet again of Christensen and Zuma. Maurizio Sarri's midfield of Kovacic, Kante and Jorginho. Big Frenchman Oli G up front, flanked by both Pedro and Captain America, Christian Pulisic. It was a shock that Lampard deployed this formation, especially as Chelsea fans hadn't seen this in pre-season, obviously not against Manchester United. But you know what? The main issue with Lampard's football at the moment was space between the lines and leaving too much space between the midfield and the defence. Now, if you remember correctly, Maurizio Sarri's main ethos of his football teams is they move around together. In this 4-3-3, they're never more than 15 yards between the lines. They push right up. Uh, and that is drilled into this current Chelsea squad. Frank Lampard knows that. He saw there was an issue of space between the lines. So he went, all right, it's a big game. Revert to type what you've been drilled uh, in last season for like, a whole season. And I'm going to give you a few extra sort of tweaks, more licenses to like go forward, this, that and the other. And hey, it worked because I guess it's the sort of muscle memory of how they played under Maurizio Sarri and they passed incredibly well under Sarri and did keep compact. So, smart from old lamps and like I said, it was less rigid than Sarri's system. Basically, less tight guidelines than I guess what Maurizio would have told his players. Like I said, it was 1-1 in full time, 2-2 extra time, and Chelsea lost out by one goal on penalties. I suppose we'll talk about that a little bit more in a second, but these players are on the pitch now on the formations graphic. I want to talk about their player performances. Starting with Kepa in goal. Inspired man, superb performance from Kepa, really showing why he's an elite quality keeper. We know he's superb with his feet, great at passing, great at passing out of pressure, but that double save that he made that everyone was tweeting about on Twitter personifies how superb of a shot stopper he is and why he's Spain's number one. As Pelicueta, after his poor, poor performance at Old Trafford and suddenly comparisons were being made between him and the fall of uh, Ivanovic were being made all over the gaff, as Pelicueta stood up and was counted in this game, suddenly so much better defensively, maybe because the formation in front of him is a bit more familiar to him, so maybe he's comfortable playing out more, but defensively he was superb and he played out of the back very, very well. Such an increased level of performance from um, Azpilicueta from last time out. Kurt Zuma, man, Kurt was poor at Old Trafford as well, obviously conceding the penalty and then really his sort of head was gone a little bit from there. Kurt was much, much better. 
he was the no nonsense defending guy. Like he would just kick the ball out into Rose Ed. Um, never switched off. You know what? Then team never switched off. But yeah, aggressive. He was good in both boxes, and yeah, he was the no nonsense guy, and therefore he had a really good performance. Christensen next to him. Now I've often critiqued Christensen for not being basically physical enough stuff perhaps because he's more of a slight defender but his positional awareness is very very good in the way he he always occupies the right space he's a very intelligent defender um, and he demonstrated that today in a very good performance positionally and basically like the rest of the team didn't drop his attention and had a very very good game right my boy emerson man he was superb in this game like he was at Old Trafford, always an attacking threat and attacking option, but it doesn't come at the expense of being poor defensively. <coughs> Marcus Alonso. He got back incredibly well, and you know what? He marshalled Mohamed Salah like he wasn't bobbed. So to get forward all the time, pop off shots, take the ball to the byline, cut back, but also deal with Mohamed Salah and basically go for 120 minutes, Really, really excellent performance from Emerson, and I think soon, if he keeps this up, people will need to stop talking about Ben Chilwell. Right, Jorginho, captain-esque performance for me. Very, very good on the ball, very aggressive, uh, good defensively, got forward a lot more, which is one of the main obvious differences in Lampard's 4-3-3 to Maurizio Sarri's. Um, ordered people around all the time really well. He's um, dispatched both his penalties superbly like we've seen him do before. His first, He was the first to console Tammy after his missed penalty. And you know what, man? I feel like if his English gets fluent, look no further than Jorginho for captain. Maybe a hot take, but he's just showing all the qualities. He doesn't expect to be a leader or a captain, but it just seems to come out of him. So natural captain qualities? Let me know in the comments below. N'Golo Kante. Boy, was it good to see the little Frenchman back on the pitch. Many commentators were saying best player on the pitch. He was good offensively, like he has developed so much since playing under Maurizio Sarri. Not everyone will say it, but it was actually a blessing for Kante. He's developed his game so much, yet still he is the best interceptor in world football. He demonstrated that today, some amazing tackles turning over possession. But yeah, he was getting forward and he was, and he was advancing into the box and it was just superb from the Frenchman. Kovacic, very technical and a superb ball carrier, like I'm always saying, really good ball progressor. Um, maybe not the brightest spark of the midfield, but he certainly played very, very well. A couple of instances where he sort of ran into the box, Frank Lampard style. Um, so yeah, he's making the right movements. One of the chances he nearly, nearly scored when Adrian came out, maybe could have done slightly better in terms of getting on the ball quicker or moving the ball, but a very solid performance from Mateo Kovacic. Olivier Giroud took his goal fantastically. We know what we're getting with Giroud. He's a really, really top class finisher and he's incredibly physical and, you know, gives it, leaves it all on the pitch. And even if he can't run fast or press and in a team that maybe wants to press, that's okay because he's such a useful tool and he scores the goal like he does he always scores the goal when he needs to he, he was the king of the Europa League last season and it just basically was had to happen him scoring in this game superb from Olivier Giroud right Pedro like Azpilicueta and maybe a bit Zuma he was really poor at Old Trafford at times but you know what Pedro in this game was a man possessed this guy's 32 now he ran around for 120 minutes plus. He was so, so good. He was making the right decisions. He was constantly pressing, running in behind, combining well. Maybe if players around him up their game a little bit, Chelsea would have converted with some more goals, but he was so good, Pedro. Uh, really good on the ball. He never wasted possession. Obviously, Liverpool deployed the Gengen press, so he's always under heavy, heavy pressure, but he just played the ball out. Whether he was scampering around on the floor after falling over, he got the ball out of his feet, to a Chelsea teammate. Pedro was insanely good. And for last, I may have saved my favorite. Obviously, Christian Pulisic got an amazing assist, but he was just electric, man. It's nice to, and Frank keeps reiterating, he's, he puts him in the same bracket as Mason Mount and you know all the other youngsters because he's only 20. And fair enough, he is only 20, but he has got a wealth of experience and he's the big money signing. And boy, does he look quality in that first half. Twitter was exploding like, oh god, well, it looks like Pulisic is a really, really good player. 
Um, really, really threatening offensively, obviously got the assist and had that goal ruled for offside. That was a close call, but what a goal it was, what a finish. It would have been the goal of the game easily. Um, superb performance by Christian Pulisic and hugely positive for Chelsea Football Club. So at the end of that half from the Olivier Giroud goal, Chelsea are 1-0 up, probably should be 2 or 3 nil up. Well, maybe 2 nil up in terms of the amount of pressure and dominance they had over Liverpool, the clear chances they were getting, but it was only 1-0 and the first half ended. And the first half ended. Right, I'm going to switch the graphic to the second half ending formation and the personnel that was on the pitch. Yeah, so the second half starts and Mane scores almost immediately, uh, leveling it up to 1-1. Chelsea actually endure a really difficult spell of Liverpool pressure there. It looked like Liverpool might score again immediately and then, you know, maybe Chelsea's heads would drop, kind of like Old Trafford or attention would drop after playing so well in the first half. But no, they conceded the equaliser and then Chelsea got back into the game and started putting the pressure on Liverpool again, playing up the other side of the pitch. Trust me, Liverpool were unsettled throughout this game. They went full strength, they went maximum effort, they wanted to win this game and you can see that on all of them and Klopp at the end. But the truth is, they couldn't live with Chelsea at times. So late in the game, Frank Lampard switches formation back to his preferred 4-2-3-1 and brings on Tammy Abraham and Mason Mount at the expense of Christian Pulisic and Olivier Giroud, which you can see in the graphic next to me. I don't think Mason Mount played as well as he could have been at Old Trafford, but in the Super Cup final when he came on, he was sublime. He was running down that flank and he was roasting whoever he was coming up against. When Trent Alexander-Arnold came on and he was super fresh legs, Mount was absolutely having him on toast. In fact, he went past Alexander-Arnold so easily at one point, he just had to be pulled down and Trent got an immediate yellow after not being on the pitch for very long. Mason Mount also scored what would have been an absolutely excellent goal but it was ruled offside rather frustratingly like the Christian Pulisic goal. Really good for Mason when he came on and when the shootout came he took an excellent penalty as well. Very pleased with his performance. Interestingly as well Tomori did come on for Christensen. Now I think this was due to Tomori's excellent recovery speed. When Frank Lampard changed the formation back to the 4-2-3-1, obviously when balls went in behind Al Trafford there was that space and Chelsea got turned over on the counter-attack. I think he made this change deliberately because of that issue with Tomori playing as a centre-back with the best recovery speed out of all Chelsea's centre-backs. That kind of made sense to sort of add a little bit of a safety blanket for that potential occurrence. Ross Barkley also came on an extra time for some fresh legs and he was very good. Uh, very good on the ball, very high octane, high press. Again, rattled Liverpool. A shame we couldn't score from his presence because he did look like he could have done something when he came on. So Mane did take the lead early in extra time, but Chelsea heads didn't drop. They kept playing, they kept pressing well. And Tammy Abraham won a penalty in the 100th minute. Now, it looked incredibly soft. Uh, the angles were very difficult to see. VAR did look at it and didn't overturn it. I think because it's got to be a clear and obvious error. Um, so it wasn't clear and obvious. It might be soft, but he won the penalty and Jorginho stepped up and converted it in the hop, skip and the jump way that he does. So 2-2 two, two, extra time ends and boy what an epic game this has been. The neutral, I mean spectators love it, obviously Liverpool fans eventually would love it. Agonising at time for Chelsea at the end but what a game for everyone and the neutral. So it goes to penalties, Liverpool will convert all five of theirs even though agonisingly Kepa gets down and gets a hand to two of them and so close to saving them which would have been great saves and then it comes down to the fifth and last penalty for Chelsea which Tammy Abraham, I think the pressure gets to him he hits a tame penalty and it's saved but it's no point really judging the kid on that he did a few good things in the game anyone can miss a penalty so don't hate on Tammy Abraham. Alright that's enough of the analysis page. What are the main talking points from this game? Well you know what I did a video yesterday on the three main reasons why Frank Lampard will be a success at Chelsea and if you haven't seen it I suggest you go and see it because this game this Super Cup final personifies everything I said in that video. Chelsea came out with spirit, they rallied, they show they've got ability, they show they've got talent. This team that are missing big creative players for them like Loftus-Cheek and Hudson-Odoi showed that, you know, even though they're missing their Galactico Eden Hazard, they can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the champions of Europe and often even outplay them. But it wasn't just about the amazing performance from Chelsea Football Club, it was more than that, it was the camaraderie. 
as much as I liked Sarri's footballing philosophy, it's obvious he couldn't create this spirit between manager and squad, manager and fan base. The way he huddled these players in, they're all in on Frank Lampard. A lot of these young players idolise Frank Lampard. He's inspirational, he can raise their performance levels, probably just by a speech at half time or before extra time. There's an incredible sense of togetherness in this Chelsea squad. And you know what, even if you're not a Galactico player, if you've got a tight knit squad and there's togetherness, it doesn't matter if you're sitting on the bench, it doesn't matter if you're just in the squad. You want your team to win, you support them, and there's a collective feeling that raises your performance levels up. Frank Lampard inspires that in his Chelsea, and he inspires that in the Chelsea fans, and that's why this Chelsea were able to put in such a good performance, and that's why Frank Lampard has proven already that he can go toe to toe with the best so early in his Chelsea project. So guys, that's the end of my match review. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Sorry for getting a bit profound and poetic at the end there, but really it was that kind of game. Um, yeah, so I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do like the video if you did enjoy it. Subscribe if you are new and also get down in the comments. Let me know your thoughts on the game. It was an emotional roller coaster, man. Anyway, I've been doing videos in the evening now, live streams, so swing by there and talk to me on the live stream. I had a bit of technical difficulties with the game missed today, but I'm still learning. Anyway, guys, that's it from me. Enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life seen trouble, hustle on the double Silence on the trigger like my pick got a muzzle Yo chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble I only love this paper, sorry I don't I love me, baby.